Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, actually I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Uh, my original plans kind of fell through because I was gonna use the drone and it's a little bit windy today. So instead I'm actually here in a little town uh, just on the coast of Ontario called Olcott, New York. And I am going to take a time lapse because uh, the clouds we got are actually pretty good. I'm not really sure where I'm going to set up for the time lapse. There's actually a set of shops uh, that are very colorful with a a lighthouse at the end that um, I've gotten some good shots down the the aisle with the lighthouse. But uh, anyways, I'm going to walk around, look around a little bit, see if there's maybe some place where I want to set up other than what I had in mind and uh, we'll be back later. There was a time when I was lonely I was trying hard to get by taking day by day Olcott, New York is a small little town located on the southern shores of Lake Ontario. It has a rich history infused with several amusement parks and resorts and at one time even had up to 10 resorts and hotels. In the late 1800s, the town became a popular summer destination for those who lived in the city. The first amusement park to arise was named Dreamland, opened in 1897. The park had a wide range of attractions, including a roller coaster, a ferris wheel, a carousel, and various games and shows. Shortly thereafter, the Olcott Beach Hotel was opened in 1902 and it had 100 rooms and included a grand dining room, a ballroom, and several lounges. It was equipped with all the modern conveniences of the time, such as electric lights, steam heat, and indoor plumbing. The amusement park was consumed by a fire in 1927, followed shortly by the Olcott Beach Hotel catching fire in 1936. Neither were rebuilt. Today, there is little left to indicate where they once both proudly stood but small clues can be found in the unassuming area now known as Crawl Park. After having the scout around, I think uh, I'm going to stick with my tried and true composition here. Let me pause myself here for a second and explain tried and true. I have visited this particular location a few times in the past. Often my visits were in the early morning hours and the sunrise has produced some amazing shots. These two images I'm showcasing here have actually become two of my top selling prints. Anyway, enough of the past, we're here to talk about a time lapse. And that is the little shops with the lighthouse on the end. Uh, I think I might try to shoot this way with a wide angle and get the, uh, again, uh, do a time lapse. There are other places, I don't know, maybe I should, Kind of have still an open mind, although my clouds are starting to go away. I'm going to have a look around in this area, see what I can get. Taking a time lapse is probably not quite so critical what, what's in the frame. But you still want to have something interesting in the foreground with the movement. Uh, in this case, the clouds in the background. Uh, so anyways, let me get set up. And I'll show you the settings. Uh, oh, actually, I say I'm taking the time lapse. So I hope I remembered my intervalometer. Uh, I have to check and double check and make sure I got that, but I'll get set up and then I'll show you the settings. I'm going to try something a little different this time and I'll show you the settings I have in my camera and we'll go from there. I did have a second look around and actually I think I'm going to change the composition for the time lapse and I think I'm going to actually shoot, not the lighthouse and not into the sun, but actually capture some of the colorful, one of the colorful shops here, the lamp posts, get some of the 
the picnic table and the other lamp posts on there and then the jetty. So I think that might look kind of nice. I'll probably have to put my wide angle on. Um, I'll let you know once I get all set up uh, what, what lens I have on there. And I get, once again, I'll, I'll show you my settings. Okay, so the way I set up the inter intervalometer that I have, I have this remote, actually it's a receiver for a remote, and that clips on the cold shoe like so. It clips on there. And then get it tight there. And then there's a little port down here. And I have this cord that plugs into the port. Plugs into the port like so. Okay, and then this other end plugs in up here. Okay, so there our receiver is all set up. Uh, right now it's at four seconds, which is too much. Turn that down. And I probably want to set it to overexpose right now. So as the sun goes down and it gets a little darker, it'll be correct. It looks like my outer exposure bracketing is on, which I don't want on. So we'll turn that off. All right, so it's a tad bit overexposed, but as the sun goes down, it's gonna get darker. So I'm gonna set this up to run. If you look here, I have my remote set to take a, a picture every three seconds, 999 exposures. I mean, I don't have to take that many, but I don't want it stopping when I don't want it to stop. I can manually stop it. My settings, um, I did put my wide angle on and I like it because I'm getting the, uh, getting this, uh, Lamp post here, I'm getting a little bit of the shop here, I'm getting a little bit of the shop here. I got I like this nice leading line of the um, railing, and then I've got the the ocean, the jetty uh, out there. So that's my setup. You know, actually, I'm going to move this over just a tad. So I moved this so the post is actually between those two jetties. And let me get back to lock this down first. So we're gonna have movement. So there's my composition, and I'm gonna start the timer. You know what? I'm actually gonna stop it because I am on. I have this on a two second timer, which I don't need. I just need single shot. So, all right, we'll start this again. All right, so as you can see, when the intervalometer counts down, it takes a picture, it counts down the number of pictures it's taken. And we'll just sit here and we'll let it run for a little bit and hopefully we'll get a nice uh, time lapse. One of the things I like about <coughs> a couple of things using your camera for the time lapse is you're taking individual pictures. So if any one of those individual pictures comes out, then uh, you can use that. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take a break here because, and I'm gonna break out my my uh, backup camera because you can actually see the city of Ontario across the lake. And I've heard about it, I've never seen it. So I'm gonna go and get a capture of it. So I'll be back talking to you guys in a little bit. The phenomena that has me so excited is known as Fata Morgana and is a mirage caused by a lensing effect when certain conditions in the atmosphere are present. This effect allows objects that are over the horizon to be visible in a small band just above the water in this case, it's allowing me to see the city of Toronto that is almost 40 miles away and well below the visible horizon. You know, I was trying to shoot that with my mirrorless backup camera with a lens that's not so great. Forgetting I actually had my cell phone. I don't know if it'll, it'll work. It's supposed to have 100 
megapixel. I don't know if that's really true or if they do some kind of funky thing. But anyways, I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, if it comes out, I'll show you guys. But I was also thinking about doing a video on uh, a cell phone versus a, a SLR and what the differences are, pros and cons. You know, one of the great things about the cell phone is it's always on you, or at least for me, it always is. So I always forget I have it. I'm going to give it a try. And if the shot comes out, here it is. The phenomenon was also visible in the time lapse, albeit a bit blurry. I'll include a clip of that time lapse at the end of the video, so make sure to watch to the end to see this incredible event. In one of my previous videos where I was visiting several lighthouses along the shores of Lake Ontario, I'd actually talked about this phenomenon, but lamented the fact that I would likely never see it nor capture it with my camera. Well, I'm able to stop lamenting now. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below as well as at the end of this video. I don't know how well those came out. Um, I don't even know if I showed it on here, if you'd even be able to really tell what I'm talking about, but it's, it's an unusual phenomenon that does happen here uh, from time to time. And you just have to have really clear skies. I guess we have clear, it's kind of cold, not super cold, but it's cold enough, but on the, on the horizon, you can actually see the city of Toronto. Going back to uh, my camera, um, I forgot where I was. Oh, one of the nice things about taking a time-lapse on a main camera and taking it as a photo, uh, because my 90D does have the ability to take a time-lapse internally and you don't need the, the remote uh, intervalometer. But the problem is, is that when you do that internally in the camera, it turns it into, uh, uh, I think it's an MP4 or an MOV or something, but it automatically converts it into a movie. Problem with that is now it's a movie. The nice thing about taking individual pictures, number one, the resolution is super, super high. So you're gonna need a computer that has a bit of processing power to be able to, to stitch them all together. Um, and secondly, uh, each individual image well, each individual frame of that time lapse is actually an image. So if an image comes out, one image comes out really excellent, then you can actually use that, you can pull that image out or make a copy of that image, treat it, edit it, and now you got an image uh, from your time lapse. So that's another advantage of shooting with, uh, with like a camera versus like I did with the GoPro in, in a couple of videos before. So, sky's, eh, it's not the best sky. I mean, the clouds are interesting. Um, sunset isn't gonna be the best. I mean, you, you got a break in the clouds. I'm not really facing towards it. I don't know, it may, once the sun gets below that line, if as long as it stays open. Again, I don't know where the sun is setting if it's open anyways. But sometimes when you get these high clouds like this, you get the sun underneath um, lighting it up and, and the sky just catches on fire. It's getting interesting over there. I don't even know if that part of the sky, um, let's see here, over there is getting kind of interesting. But I don't even know if that's in my composition. I may be far, too far off to the side. But I don't know, I'll keep letting it go. We'll be here till maybe after the sun goes down a little bit and or at least below the horizon a little bit and then we'll head home so actually we're starting to get a really nice sky the, the sun did start lighting up the bottom of the clouds but uh, as you can see i got some uh fans i don't know how well you can see them <laughs> uh there's a couple individuals taking photos so they're going to be in the time lapse a little do they know um but I'm not the only one taking advantage of this beautiful, what turned out to be a beautiful sunset. I'm actually wondering what it looks like actually over where you can actually see the sun itself. But we're over here. Uh, this is what I picked. This is, I think this will turn out to be a decent time lapse. We'll uh, let it keep going. Um, let me check the back of the camera here where we're at. Yeah, we still got a ways to go yet before I think we need to start worrying or start shutting it down. It's still capturing 
Um, here, turn you guys around here. We're still capturing some of that light. The clouds are pretty good. I set the ISO max to 1600. So it's gonna peg out at that and then I'll just start getting dark and um, hopefully it won't get too noisy. I don't think 1600 is too bad on this camera. Um, but after that, then I'll just start getting dark and dark and we'll see how I guess we'll see how that turns out. I'm a little bit excited to see how this turns out. I'll be excited if uh, we can actually see the Toronto skyline in the time lapse. Um, but maybe I have enough high enough resolution that I can actually uh, zoom in on that and get a time lapse. The camera actually just shut off, which means it shot uh, almost a thousand exposures for this time lapse. So maybe a little much, but anyways, I'll get it home, get it, uh, get them all put together, create the video. If that turned out, here it is. Earlier in the video, I talked about taking a time lapse with my DLSR versus the GoPro. If you're interested in seeing that video, click on the link over here. And with that, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.